hello. So I just want to start this vlog out, tell you guys what I've been listening to. Also show you one of my new plants I got yesterday, this Calathea. She is beautiful and I'm trying to take good care of her. But you know, plant therapy, right? I did, I should show you guys this too. I'll show you the blind book because that's what I was talking about at the end of the last vlog, sitting in probably the same exact spot. So the um, lawn company just came to winterize the sprinklers, which is a sad time because that means winter is coming. And if you know me, you know I hate winter more than anything. I'm living in the wrong state. Uh, unfortunately, I can't get my whole family to move. It's tragic, I know. So that's sad because that means it's gonna freeze soon, which is why I had to get all the water out of the water lines. So, but I've had a productive day. That's done. I've done like three loads of laundry. I've cleaned my house. I've listened to like 32% of a book, something along those lines. And so, you know, this is how we start a day off right. So I have been listening to Know My Name by Chanel Miller. This is a memoir that I wasn't even really aware of. Of course, I knew about the trial and the case from hearing about it in the news and such, but I actually didn't know she wrote a book. And I saw Jen Campbell talking about it on her channel in some of her videos, and I just knew that I had to listen to it. So this is her memoir all about the rape, all about the trial, the court case, everything that she went through. And I have been nonstop nauseous, sick to my stomach. It's very hard to read. It is very triggering. I text my sister and I was like, maybe I need to go back to therapy. Um, because everything that I hate in the world, this book discusses. All the little details of people not believing you, people saying that it's your fault, people saying that it's not that bad, people blaming her. Like, there's just so many little things that I'm so passionate about. Like, I want to be able to have the privileges that a man does. And I'm not saying that men um, aren't raped or involved in violence, but when it comes to walking down the street, getting groped, getting catcalled, being afraid to travel places alone because I'm a woman, or even just the occurrences like at my house last weekend with the men delivering the refrigerator, people asking how I can build my own house because I'm a woman. They would never question these things as a man. And so I understand like it that diverges slightly from the content within this book, but they're all related and they're all discussed upon because she very much is persistent in the fact that she doesn't wanna to have to alter her life because she's a woman to avoid violence. Should we um, be taking a ride home in an Uber instead of walking because it's safer? Maybe, but I don't wanna to have to do that and neither does she. I should be able to walk home. So it's just, it's it's enraging, it is, nauseating, it is infuriating, it is heartbreaking, and I'm just so sad for the world, for her, for all the women who are silenced, because unfortunately we live in a society where even sometimes your own friends and family won't necessarily just believe you or will ask what you maybe did to bring this upon yourself. Well, what did you do? Um, and it's like, I could do anything and I still didn't deserve this. I think I'm somewhere between like 32 and 35%, something like that of the way through it. And I just started it last night and I can't stop listening to it as I've been doing housework and chores and stuff today. Um, but I will say, I feel like I need to take a break from it. I had several of my friends in Patreon tell me that they had to put it down and hadn't finished it yet because it's so hard to listen to. And that is absolutely true. So take care if you're going to choose to pick this up and read it because it's very hard to get through, similar to Freshwater, where it really affected my mood, and I was glad I was able to read it in two days. This book has that same sort of feeling, and it's long. It's a 15 hour long audiobook and you know about 400 pages. Generally, that would take me like a week to read. So I have listened to a ton of it, as I said, but I have a feeling I will either need to listen to something else in between or just get it done and out of the way so I can finish listening to her story but move on. And how sad is it that I have that privilege um, and she doesn't, this is her life. But if you know what I'm saying, it's something that really, really affects you and your mood and everything, especially if you've been through anything like this. Um, and I really think it should be like required reading basically because I don't know, there was this whole discussion with uh, one of the books that Steven Erickson wrote. And he said he basically wrote it for the trauma survivors so that people 
could like almost pay tribute. I'm not wording that properly, so don't quote me, but to trauma survivors. And I kind of got mad about that. But at this point, um, I kind of take that back a little bit. So not that I want other people to feel this upset, but if you've had the privilege of never walking through something like this in your life, um, and I don't mean this exact circumstance, but similar things, then you should probably give this a read so that you can understand your fellow sister, brother, mother, father, cousin, whoever it is, friend, because I bet you they have. When you look at the statistics, it is frightening and it would perhaps give you better understanding and allow you to really know what's okay to say and what's not at times because I think we say a lot of things without meaning them a certain way and don't realize the implication that our words have um, or the effect afterwards, the way that they make people feel. So um, yeah, I will not soon be over this book and I'll probably just only check in with you guys at the end once I've finish it because it is so heavy. Um, and then it's a fresh day, you guys. So I do have other things that I need to get done today. But, um, you know, it's not a new month yet, but I sort of closed the chapter on October in the last reading vlog. And I finished everything other than Tomi that I wanna read, but I did finish a couple more chapters of that this morning. And now I'm nearly finished with the book, but maybe I'll sit down and finish that and then truly move on. Um, which I, it's absolutely delightful, by the way, especially, I don't know, seeing a woman take power back. I'm going to film my November TBR today and just my October book haul. Those are next week's video. You guys will have already seen those, but I am so excited, friends, about November because I'm putting no pressure on myself. I'm setting a goal to read between five and six books, period, total. That's it. If I get to more than that because I truly feel like reading more, then fabulous, but if I don't, I won't. And that's it because I don't want to force myself to read as much as I have been. Um, and I really feel like I don't do it at all due to booktube pressures. I do it because as a reader, there are 1 million stories that I want to experience in the world. And it literally drives me insane that I know I will never be able to read all of the books I want to read. So I guess that's why I should take care in my TBR to really prioritize the things that stand out to me the most, the things that really sound the most interesting, try to block out all of the buzz and the noise that I hear from outside sources, unless it is something that I'm intentionally seeking. I mean, it's a consumerist world. It's a consumerist industry, and that's not a bad thing. However, it really draws your attention away from your goals. I'll discuss it more next year, but I'm looking to kind of read a uh, literary fiction, a nonfiction, a sci-fi, a fantasy, um, and a magical realism, possibly a horror um, per month. I just want to round out my reading because I truly enjoy all of those genres tremendously. You know, maybe throw a classic in there or maybe the classic will be the sci-fi or such. So I'm really, really excited about it, you guys. I feel like better than ever about my reading plan. So hopefully you guys will be excited. Most of you have said that you enjoy watching my channel because you get new and interesting recommendations that you don't find elsewhere. And every time you guys say that to me, my heart like skips a beat because it makes me so dang happy. I know I complain a lot about comments and stuff on this channel, but I want to just take a moment to say, I have had so many comments today of people saying I would have never picked up this book if it weren't for you. Like several people have said that to me today and it was a book experience they loved. And it truly means a lot to me when you guys take the time to say that. So thank you for sharing. And I'm glad that you're enjoying the books. And I know every book won't be for every person, but I'm glad that some of you guys are at least enjoying the books that I have been recommending because I try to read what I'm interested in, but also recommend a variety of things for you guys. So this clip is super long, but I need to go finish some laundry, finish cleaning. And yeah, I have plans tonight, which I'm looking forward to. Feels like a pretty chill weekend, but okay, I wanna show you actually the other little plants I got um, that I'm going to plant. One, so my sister a while back had gotten me these little measuring cups that are um, cats. Uh, so I have to plant this in here just for now, obviously, because it's not gonna stay in there, but how precious is it in these beautiful leaves? Oh, I love them. I love them. I love them. And then this one, um, this might be too small even at this point. So I might just plant it in one of the mugs because my mom had gotten this made for me. How adorable. Cause that's me and my cats. Isn't she the sweetest? Look at her. <laughs> and I think my mom also got me that bee mug. She's the sweetest. So anyways, I'm going to plant those and I need to plant a lot of things actually, because 
Don't you just love seeing all the green? Do you guys think it's weird? But yeah, I still need to plant two of these as well. So I thought I'd give you guys a little update about my reading. My shelves are actually a disaster right now. I mean, I'm just like trying to figure out what to do and I can't get it together. But I did wanna let you guys know that I finished Know My Name by Chanel Miller and it's definitely gonna make it into my best of the year list. It was just such a good book. Um, I cannot recommend this book enough to every single person in my life. I mean, literally everyone, I'm gonna try to convince to read it because it's so important, it is so well written. I was truly impressed by her writing abilities just because obviously everything that she went through and she had a lot to say, but she did a phenomenal job in getting her message across in a very honest and raw way, but at the same time, a way that was able to hopefully make people like receptive to her message because I feel like I wouldn't have that same capability. I, I would have a hard time not being more bitter, I guess, or, I mean, you definitely were able to see her true like thoughts and feelings at times, but I, I, I'll stop talking about it now, but I'm just very impressed at her writing capabilities and the book in general, five out of five stars. Um, I guarantee you it will be on my best of 2021 list. So that is all I've read the last couple days for the most part. Now, yesterday before I went tailgating at the MSU U of M game, um, I began reading The Ninth Rain. I'm only on chapter one, but what I've read of it so far is interesting. I like the writing style. It's like quick and easy to read. And we've got like some vampire characters so far and there's a tree god, which is cool. So I'm very intrigued to keep reading that and see where it goes. Um, that's going to be my physical read. So since I'm only planning on reading five or six books in the month of November, I have to read about 76 pages or so to complete this in one week. So that's going to be my goal, which still, I mean, honestly, that's a ton of reading to finish this book in seven days to read 75 pages a day is a lot for me at this point in my life. It never used to be. I could read like hundreds of pages a day, I swear. But um, so that is my physical book. And then the audio book that I have just barely gotten into chapter two of is A Little Life. And this is one of our Patreon buddy reads as well. And I always, so I've started it before and I always get so lost and confused. And I was like, can you guys, do you guys have any character maps? So thankfully my friends in Patreon helped with that because it's a lot to keep track of. And I do remember that it's not like a linear timeline. So I know things like bounce around if I'm remembering correctly. And there's, it's just such a character driven book. And you learn so many little details about the characters that it's really important to keep track of. So that's just a quick update on what I'm reading. It was fun at the tailgate yesterday, but it was a bit embarrassing to be a U of M fan um, since it was in East Lansing and we lost and every time that something good happened for MSU everybody would just like look at the people in Michigan gear like hmm sucks to suck <laughs> um, but they got kind of crazy down there there was some fires and flipped cars and I did not partake in those events but it was fun and then I had my friend's birthday party so today I'm going trick-or-treating with the nephews and I'm I'm so excited I cannot wait to watch them uh, get candy Andy. It's the first time that Lincoln will be old enough to do so. And I'm really looking forward to watch him, but just wanted to update before maybe, maybe I'll sit down and read. I got to edit. so impressed with myself. I just filmed my October wrap up, which is 18 books, three manga and three graphic novels. And I filmed it in like 30 some minutes. So that's impressive. But that's because like I've been doing so many reading vlogs. There's no reason to drag it out. Um, also over here, my book room. At this point, I would nearly pay someone to organize my books for me. Has anyone ever felt this way? Has anyone ever felt so distraught about organizing their books that they wanted to pay somebody to come do it right for them? Is it just me? <laughs> um, okay, I want to update you guys on these two books that I'm reading. So I'm reading A Little Life and Ninth Rain right now and thoroughly enjoying both. So let's talk about A Little Life for a second. I'm about 15% of the way through it. So I'm on part two, which is the postman at this point. And I just cannot believe. So like 
every single chapter is better than the last. And we learn so many exciting, like we learn so many interesting things about the characters past within every single story. I'm so impressed by the writing and it is like very long and long sentences and long histories. And I know this book will not be for everyone because of that. I think like a lot of people would probably be bored just because you have to be in the right mood. You have to be wanting to just read simply about these characters' lives. It's not like a plot driven book by any means, but oh my God, is it so beautifully written. And I, I think at this point, like I just, I'm dying to know what actually happened to Jude. I won't say more than that because I'm not going to make any of this spoiler filled. Every, every character has something that's like tragic about them, something that's heartbreaking. Um, but this friendship and these friends together, these four friends, like I love seeing their interactions and I love getting their backstory and their history. It's like everything that we're told feels like there's a reason and a purpose. And even if they are some of the little most insignificant details about their life, I truly feel like the author is telling us them for a reason and that you will see the impact of it later on. So I'm absolutely loving this. And then with the ninth reign, I'm only on page 70. So I'm on chapter five and I'm getting a little bit more of the world building to become invested. Uh, and it's just like my perfect reintroduction into fantasy for November after taking like a month off of reading fantasy because we have like some different things. So there's like, they call this the behemoth. And then there's like these, I swear to God, like alien type of paranormal creatures that are sort of attacking people in one place. Um, there's already, already like sibling dynamics and we're learning about how the people of this one place have this tree god and since the eighth reign, they are dying, things are attacking them, they are no, no longer able to be immortals and live longer than typical humans for the most part. I mean, some of them can because they drink blood of humans to prolong their life, but you can also die from too much human blood. So there's a lot of cool things going on at this point. I think right now, like it seems like we're gonna be trying to solve the mystery of why the tree god is like dead and why it doesn't rain anymore to help save the people there. I don't know if that's a mystery that we're trying to solve, but a couple of the characters are kind of out and about trying to investigate some things. So like I said in my last clip, it's very accessible in the writing style. Um, it's very readable. It's not like mind boggling and confusing which is just like the perfect fantasy I want right now for getting back into reading fantasy. So, so far I'm having a great time. That far through, I have the goal of reading 75 pages a day to get through this in one week's time. And yeah, so there's witches, there's like vampires, even if they go by other types of names, all kinds of cool aspects within this story. So these are my two books right now. A Little Life is gonna take ages and ages because it's like 800 pages. Audiobook, physical book, and that's all we've got going on. I get asked quite often about my annotating. So I'm hoping to sit down and start annotating this tonight. So I should have some time to annotate. And I guess, yeah, I will make a video because you guys keep asking how I annotate my books. So I'm definitely going to put that in the queue to make that video soon. And then um, a lot of you guys were asking about the buddy read for this. So it's in my Patreon Discord server, but there's always a Dune channel to talk about everything Dune related in my public Discord server. If you guys just want to hop in there and chat about it, I'd be happy to as well. But the like actual buddy read is in the Patreon server. And then this is also going on in the background. If I haven't started it yet, this is volume seven of Berserk, but I will pick that up sometime soon. And yeah, this is it. It feels great to just be reading two things at once. Okay, so I have gotten a ton of stuff done with plants today, which I'm excited about. I still need to properly repot that. And then I moved these succulents back to the window because they were not doing so hot. They need like direct sunlight. But I put this on my Instagram story because look, oh, I'm gonna pull them out by accident roots. So these pothos, I cannot wait to repot those. I'm giving one to my mom because she stored all of my plants for me when I um, was living there and then she kind of missed having one. So I want to grow it for her because that's way better than buying it for her. Also, this is what I decided to do with those little plants. So we have the cute little kitty measuring cup. So I put that plant in there and then my mom actually got me this mug. This is a good day to have a good day because like that's how I live my life. So those are gonna live there for now until they're too big. Also this one plant dried it 
drown it. I don't know what's happening to it. I'm really sad and I feel like defeated about it, but like, what can I do? I also changed my nose ring today and I'm digging the gold. So anyways, I cleaned it up and this little guy is gonna survive, mark my words. Uh, but yeah, no, just weekly plant care and watering. I managed to spill dirty dirt water all over this couch, which I'm sad about, but I kind of cleaned these up too because during the whole move and while they were at my parents' house and stuff, this one kind of had a vine die, so I trimmed it up so that it's just healthy and living now, and it looks excellent. And then planted my calathea here. Can't see because it's so dark, but I repotted a lot of these. So my aloe is now in the, that pot, which looks nice. And then um, I accidentally bought this today. Not accidentally, maybe. But um, so yeah, because I'm gonna have like black door handles and everything. I wanted the black accents there. And then um, I accidentally bought this today too. I was getting a birthday present for my friend, which I'm, I got her that hanging succulent because she wanted, well, she saw my string of pearls and she wanted one. So I got her her own string of pearls and then the other one, which I thought was super cute. I kind of already showed you guys in one of my last clips, but this is my book mail as of late. I'm kind of excited with reading less that I'll be bringing in less books per month too. It just feels better. Feels better for me to be bringing in less books, as weird as that sounds. But those are my updates. And yeah, I mean, like, it's a whole heck of a lot. Oh, I replanted one more in my bedroom too. I did decide I'm gonna hang my TV on this wall, but I'm gonna hang it above so I don't have to move my plants and get like a tilting one. And then, yeah, I just, I just have those plants there, but I planted this one. This one needs to be revived. It was like a clearance plant, but it's all good. I'm gonna take care of it and we're gonna, we're gonna make it healthy and living and wonderful again. So those are all my plant updates today. I just thought I would share because you guys sometimes ask about having plants and you guys ask where to start with plants because a lot of people want plants but are worried because they're kind of hard to take care of, which can be true. Definitely like all of my larger plants that are doing really well. Well, my palm, I need to cut off the outside branches, which you just have to do periodically. But like my palm and my monstera that is like 16 times the size of when I got it. I mean, it is just thriving. And my um, fiddle leaf fig right here, which is huge and so much nicer than when I got it. All of those, like I went over the top. <laughs> researching the soil combinations so those were a little trickier but this one right here it's kind of hard to see again um the snake plant i swear to god you can get one of those and you won't kill it if it's in a room where there's sunlight does not have to be direct sunlight doesn't have to be a super bright room um but if you have that like i swear to god you won't kill it <laughs> I have forgotten about those. I have forgotten to water it for ages at different stages of my life, not as of late, but I've had that thing for a long freaking time and it's like unkillable. Same thing with pothos, um, which are the, the hanging down ones, the ones I'm propagating. Uh, those are like impossible to kill. You can literally forget about them for ages. People call them trash plant. Um, but I think they're beautiful and I love the vines. Like I think it just looks so nice on your wall. Oh, these right here are all clippings from those cause it was too long. So I'm gonna plant those eventually. Maybe I'll give one of those to my mom. So these ones, when I moved in, I cut off like a couple feet from each and now they're already on the ground again. So they grow so fast. So you could do pothos. Also bamboo, bamboo like lives in water. You don't even have to plant it either. Same thing with pothos. Like those up there are in water. You can literally leave them in water for the longest time. I think I didn't plant mine for like a year one time. But yeah, this bamboo, I have planted mine in dirt. I've done both before, but you can literally like leave it in water too. So um, I am no plant expert. I'll probably get those plant experts commenting on this and being like, she's wrong. She's absolutely wrong, but I mean, I don't know. I seem to be doing okay. <laughs> so there are some helpful plant beginner tips because I am yet still a beginner, but I'd like to be an expert. But when you have this many plants, the care it takes, I mean, like it's, it's a chore, but like a good one. Like I am a plant mom and a cat mom. And that's like how I like my life. But um, yeah, it, it takes a while to care for them. And I need to like clean the leaves because that's a thing too. But that's all for now. Okay, got to my 76 pages for day one of November. 
the chapter actually ended at page 84. So that's where I'm at with ninth grade, right on track to finish in one week, <laughs> even though it's only day one. And then I sat down and I started my reread of Dune, which I'm really excited about. I'm only on page like 26, I think. But I always tab so much in the beginning, you guys, and I will make a video about how I annotate. Just like a quick little example, I do not tab every single thing that I underline. Like there's just random things that I underline that I don't tab. But like, for example, in this one, um, I'm using the purple tabs for people that you need to remember. Um, green tabs are like certain facts, uh, just sort of like important information. And the blue tabs and underlining is like foreshadowing um, what we're talking about. So we just like have more people again. And then like there's name, uh, all these names I wanna remember. Just like little bits that are sticking out to me. And one thing I want to say too is um, my analysis of Jessica in the movie versus the book. And I said how I hated how she seemed so scared all the time. Now in this first chapter, Paul notices and comments upon her being scared multiple times. So I just wanted to throw that out here um, that he picks up on it. So I just thought that was interesting because I obviously had forgotten that he pointed that out. More important information. Pink I use for my favorite quotes. Um, so obviously uh, that is one. And there's one more. Hope clouds observation. I have the worst handwriting in the world. And then I just kind of like made little notes about like Paul's behavior as a child. And then we get to the Barons chapter. So like this is their plan, you know, just lots of important foreshadowing and information that's taking place. I did note that there were some things that I actually didn't notice um, visually in the book um, that the movie helped point out. I know there's another one coming up here soon. This, so talking about the portable suspensors harnessed, didn't notice that at all the first time. And then the movie kind of like, made it come to life so lots of tabs lots of underlining but that's kind of a little preview and i will do a video about it whoever decides to do these should be fired i'm so excited because my dad came over and we installed this tv in my room tonight which originally i was not gonna do because like tvs are ugly and i like my room but it's so comfy laying in bed watching tv but i still have to get the insert for the wall to hide the cords so it doesn't look like trash, but actually I'm quite excited now. And I think I just might continue my rewatch of Breaking Bad, maybe. That show, it like just causes so much anxiety, so I'm not sure. Okay friends, concert number five outfit. These are not the same red pants I wore before. They look like it, but they're not. So we're gonna go see in this moment, and I'm excited. Okay, this is better, with the jacket on, right? Mm -hmm. What's up, you guys? So I'm about to go do round two of cardio today because your girl has had a little too much alcohol in the last month. As Excuse me. Just a lot to say, I guess. Um, yeah, too much alcohol and I need to like sweat it out of my system. My body just does not handle my kidney problems. Um, so I'm gonna go do some more cardio. And while I do so, I'm going to be reading this uh, ninth rain. Let's take this with us. Apparently Carly desperately needs something. You act like I don't feed you. I hate when she does this. Um, so yeah, I'm about this far through ninth rain, just about halfway through. And honestly, I don't even mind doing cardio when I have this book to read. Although I would like to stop drinking alcohol because I would like to stop doing two rounds of cardio a day working out twice a day. But anyways, I did go to the In This Moment show last night with my best friend, so I'll update you guys about that in a minute too. Here's some terribly uninteresting content for you. Um, I'm going to, I don't know why it says guest, do 15 minutes on the treadmill at a speed of 3.7, at an incline of 15, 
And we're going to go. We're going to read this book. I'm really proud of myself for not breaking the spine at all yet because it's a UK edition. <laughs> and yes, you have to haul ass to go that speed on this incline. So we're going to start 15 minutes here and then 15 minutes there. And yeah, let's go. Let's get some reading done. Okay. Just finished my cardio and I made it to page 286, which is chapter 26 of The Ninth Reign. And we just found out a little twist, which is exciting. I always love when we get a reveal. It definitely makes you want to keep reading. So I find that this book is just incredibly unput downable. Um, I will say I'm supposed to read about... 20 more pages tonight to read my 76 pages per day and I am finding that rather challenging so even though my goal is to only read physically four books this month um that's still kind of a lot for my lifestyle because having the tailgate well I was busy all day Friday then I had the tailgate all day Saturday uh Halloween and family stuff Sunday I had a concert one night this week it's just like I do not have time but I'm okay like I'm not I feel no pressure I just feel good knowing that my goal was not too small this is like a four-star read for me right now just tons of fun it's super cool there's flying bats that you ride there are witches on the run that have this like winnow fire I think is what they call it so it's like green flames coming out of their hands um, there are like vampire type of creatures called Eborans. I like that they're not called vampires. They just have to drink blood because they found out about its benefits after this tree god is no longer alive. Um, but I like that they're, I like that it, everything's unique. There's no like classic tropey fantasy characters, um, which makes it feel separate from a vampire book. So there's definitely like some gross things described for people. I wouldn't consider this horror because like I read some hardcore horror. So for me, this does not feel like horror, even if we're talking about maggots eating people from the inside out, which we are talking about that. Um, it's done in such like a lighthearted way that it doesn't feel scary to me, but I like the characters. You've got like a cunning Eborin and her brother separate from one another who are both trying to find out what's happened to the tree god that's dead. And then we have the like human who's vintage and she's also smart. She's got an agenda of her own. She wants to figure out about these like artifacts basically that were left behind. And then we have a witch on the run. Um, and I think that's most of our main characters. I feel like I'm forgetting some, but I, I think everyone is pretty well done. I wouldn't say it's like the most unique characters I've ever read in my life. They are all satisfactory. They're all unique from one another. They all make a good dynamic and contribute things to the story. They are definitely not interchangeable. So I don't have any complaints about the characters. I actually like them. I think there's going to be a bit of a romance. I feel it coming on from characters that don't like each other right now. I suppose we'll see. And then the plot. Plot is great. Very engaging. The world building is also great. Like everything, nothing is wowing me, but it's 100% a fun time start to finish so far. Like I said, I'm just over halfway. I am the thicker part of the way through. So yeah, I'm not going to finish it in this vlog, obviously, because it's about to end. I'll finish it to next week. If this is day four, I'll finish it in three days, hopefully. But yeah, I am so glad I picked this book up. I'm so happy I decided to get back into fantasy with this book because I'm having the best time reading it. And it's one that like, I already have the feeling of I, I'm like, okay, when can I fit the sequel into my TBR? Because I just feel like I'm, I, I like this world enough to continue on with it. And I just hope that the next couple of books are not bigger. But yeah, so I'm gonna go shower and eat dinner and then I'll update you about the other book I'm reading. I need to update about A Little Life. So I'm on part four, chapter three. I'm doing the audiobook, which I highly recommend the audiobook, by the way. I feel like it's adding so much to my experience. Um, the narrator is fantastic and he adds so much emotion to all of the events that are being described. So I feel like my experience has really been enhanced by listening to the audiobook, but I know that I've just reached over the halfway point. And I have nothing but phenomenal things to say about this. I can't stop listening to it. So I can't describe to you how much I love every single second of this book. There is never information that I don't wanna to listen to. There's never been a time I'm bored. There's never been a time where I'm like, all right, get on with it. Let's get on to the next thing. No, every single thing 
is so well thought out, is so purposeful and important, and it breaks my heart and it kills me. I'm really glad we're buddy reading this in my Patreon because all of us are just like, oh my God, this moment, and then this moment, and so it just kind of like makes it more impactful to talk about the events that are happening with other people, but it is so tragic. It is just absolutely devastating and heartbreaking. Now, people throw around the term torture porn a lot when describing this book, and I don't understand that, frankly, I guess. I've heard the complaint that people say like, oh, we just thought of every single bad thing that could ever happen to these characters and put it in the book and like, in my opinion, it doesn't feel that way in the slightest. So I don't know like where people get that from exactly, but we're following somebody's tragic life story. All they want is a little life and happiness is not for them. And it's so horribly heartbreaking and so beautifully written and profound and just lots of heavy themes in here, but I'm enjoying every second of it. You know, the exploration of friendship and trauma and love and life and happiness is absolutely beautiful. Like this will go down in history as one of my favorite books of all time ever, I feel like. Like I, I don't feel like it's too early to say that. It's absolutely going to be a favorite book ever. I think because of like my love, if we're comparing this to like young adults, my love for the Raven Boys and that friendship, it's kind of like, you know, if things took a turn for the worse and we followed them way, way later in life. That bond, I love reading about strong friendships over time. I almost wish I was doing a spoiler-filled reading vlog for this because that would probably be more beneficial hearing more of my thoughts, but that's all I'll say for now, I suppose. And then I guess if you stay tuned and watch next week's reading vlog, you'll hear my final thoughts because I will finish it within the next week or so, but we're already planning on reading The People in the Trees in, is it January? Yeah, it's January. And then I have the arc of um, her new book coming out, so I wanna read that right after. Lots of fun, exciting new books coming up in the future. Let me grab the only other thing I've been reading, Dune by Frank Herbert, obviously. So I'm only on page 52 and there's a million tabs. I didn't get the chance to read any anything at all actually last night because of the In This Moment concert. So I'll insert some clips right there. But let me just tell you, that woman I am in love with. She is absolutely fantastic. What a phenomenal performance. So they did not play that many songs and at first we were a little bit bummed about it. And then once we realized that every single song was a theatrical performance, we understood why. They had so many outfit changes. It was like all these props and things on stage. Everything was like ritualistic. I don't know if she's Wiccan, I should look into it. We had so much fun going, so I didn't have any time reading last night and I probably won't tonight to be honest. I work early tomorrow and I need to edit this entire video. I've not started yet, so we'll see. For the emoji, give me the, um, it's a crystal ball and there's definitely an emoji of it. Um, use that emoji, but let me know what are you guys up to this weekend? What are you reading this weekend? Let me know what your plans are. I hope that you guys have a fabulous time reading or not. I will be working this weekend and hopefully having a little bit of fun as well and catching up on some sleep because your girl is tired. But thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.